Hi guys, welcome to Draw It With Me. Today we're going to create a custom map for a fantasy world. So, you've written a story, or you're writing a story, or you want to write a story. Chances are, as you begin the writing process, you'll need a setting for your character's plot and conflict. So you create one, or dozens. Perhaps it takes place in a village, an untouched forest, a desert, or swamp. Maybe it takes place inside a single room, a compound, continent or alien planet. As your characters travel around interacting within your plot, whether you mean to or not, you're creating a map. Many authors decide later on that they want a physical representation of the world they've built in their writing, and so turn to an artist, cartographer, or piece of software to chart out their story. If you look at the beautifully illustrated fantasy maps in books, on posters, and across the internet, and wish that you could build worlds just as incredible, then you're in luck. We'll be going over a few guidelines for making your maps better, more beautiful, and easier to understand. Today I'll be creating a map of a world from one of my books entitled Defender of Lions. In this story we have three fantasy or alien races, Viram, Mykans, and Gorbanes. They all live on an island continent called Lasuna. As I began writing Defender of Lions, I did a rough sketch on a scrap paper to figure out the distance and relationship between the different cities and strongholds of my characters. I then took that rough and redrew it with more care and detail over top the image of a human heart. Even though my story contains no humans, I decided it would be a nice symbol for the humanity within the characterization of my fantasy races. I then simply transferred those lines onto a nice sheet of Bristol board and began the final drawing, which I'm working on here. Maps can take hours, even days, but I won't make you sit here that long. I'll simply show you the steps, and you can take your own sweet time creating your worlds. As far as supplies go, you can use a pencil on paper, a brush on canvas, or a stylus in Photoshop, or any number of paint programs. It really depends on the look you're going for and the project's final intended destination, whether that's for print media, the internet, or for a film. As you can see, I'm drawing my map traditionally to add an organic quality. Afterwards, I'll scan it in and do the painting digitally in Photoshop. First, it's important to understand how your map will tell a story. Maps can, in some cases, be an instant introduction to the land we're visiting. They can give a clear picture of a place's history, its battles, the way a people or culture view the world, even if the state of the world itself is in doubt. Second, always keep the viewer in mind. The key point about maps is that they are a way of conveying information. You want your viewers to be able to understand your map, and you want them to want to look at your map in the first place.
In order to be successful, the image needs to satisfy the principal requirements of utility, clarity, and beauty. Will the finished piece provide the information the viewer needs in an understandable manner and inspire their imagination? If any of these three elements are missing, the resulting image will either be unhelpful, unreadable, or ugly. Third, study real geography. One way to make your map more visually appealing is to understand the way geographical elements work in the real world. Look at the shapes of mountain ranges and rivers. Think about the formation of lakes. If you're working on a map of a city, you might want to study good city layout, planning, or formation. After the break, we'll splash some color over Lasuna, so stay with me. Number four, pick your palette. Often if you're working with a print book, you have no choice but to work in black and white. But color can do a lot to enhance the look of your map. Are you going for a storybook feel? Look at illustrations that evoke that and study their color schemes. Want your world to feel like it comes from a particular era in human history? Look at maps from that same era. Inspiration can come from anywhere. Fifth, study the work of real-world cartographers. Really, there's nothing quite like actual maps to help improve your understanding of geography and to gain inspiration than looking at what cartographers mapping the real world have done. Another good idea is to break out of the rectangle. You'll notice that many maps in fantasy books are often vaguely rectangular so they can fit in the space that's available to draw in. Ask yourself, am I drawing at this shape because that's the shape of my paper? Rethink the shapes and angles of your world and remember that just because your paper is rectangular, that doesn't mean your fantasy continent has to be rectangular too. Seven, consider embellishments, but don't overload your map with them. Sometimes maps offer an opportunity to convey more than pure information. The area outside the map can be as important as the area inside the map. Putting meaning into all the decorative frills can really add to the project as well. Some maps convey basic information about the world from a distance, but then offer meaningful detail up close. You can add heraldic symbols to your map, small illustrations of monsters, representations of events, or you can do it in smaller ways with the style of your legend and compass rows, your font, even simply the way you draw your geographical features. It's helpful to give maps your own personal flair, but you want to be careful when adding embellishments to your maps. They can be fun and add valuable information, but you want to keep in mind the admonition to focus on utility, clarity, and beauty.
Finally, don't rush. Spend as much time on your map as it needs. The biggest mistake new cartographers make is not spending enough time on their maps. The best map makers are accomplished artists in their own right and tend to have a deep interest in how images are crafted and not just what content is going into them. So what can I tell you? Draw, draw, and draw some more. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to like and subscribe if you find these videos helpful or entertaining. Take care.